hoping to keep this to an hour, so if we get started now, hopefully we'll stay on schedule. We're just going to go over 10 minutes just to go with the vendor program and insurance, and then I think we're going to let all the co-op people go, and then we will be going into special assessments and loans. We will have a handout later, so I'll distribute that as soon as I'm done. So I want to get started and see, has everyone, I know we have a lot of new employees, I know some of you are already familiar with the program, but I'm sure everyone has seen emails regarding the vendor program, uh, what's all included, the benefits, and why we go through this process. One of the things that we do every year is we have the renewal process for our vendor directories and uh, for vendors to get involved in doing the program. Is everyone familiar with the vendor book? It looks like this. If not, please reach out to your regional director because they can get you additional copies. We'd like to share them, or Catherine. We'd like to share them with some of our board members so that they can have them as well as an added resource if they want to look through and see what vendors are currently available for them for the services. So I need to hire a vendor. We're in budget season, as we all know. We're looking to go out to bid for special projects, things that the associations want to do. We often get those emails that say, does anyone know a good vendor that can do my roofing, waterproofing, set pointing, things along those lines? So that's one way you can go about it. I'm waiting for Susan. Hold on, I've got <laughs> We can go through the vendor directory. You can also go through STAR, and we're going to show you how to look that up in STAR as well. I'm going to try to. You're going to try to? <coughs> One of the things, when you go in STAR and you look up the vendors, there's also an area where you can provide reviews. So you can get feedback. All of the managers are able to put feedback in as well as board members, and it's a very good tool. So for example, one of our In Good Company partners, which everyone should be familiar with, is Barry Roofing. So if we go and we look at Barry Roofing, you can see who they are, you can see what they do, and ensure that they are part of the vendor program, and you can go to the review tab. On this review tab, you can see what managers and or board members have commented on this. So there's, and they stay in there forever as long as they're part of the program. So this is another resource you can use to see who would be good for a project. You can also go in and you can sort by specialty. So if Susan goes back, you can look the vendor up by name or specialty right there. Type in what type of project you're looking for and you will come up with a whole list of vendors. Now, anyone that is approved is also in the vendor directory, and we do update that all the time. Any questions on how to get to that screen? Because I know some people are not used to using that and searching through there. It's very easy. If you need any help, feel free to reach out to any of us. We can also email the vendor program if you have questions about the vendor program. So if I go back to the slides, Susan. Okay. Okay, so we were talking about the STAR, the vendor directory, um, board recommendations, co-workers. Yeah, I'm in the wrong one. Sorry. Thanks. We're getting there. Show me to do it. Star vendors. We talked about the reviews. Talked about your talking to your fellow managers, knowing a guy. Obviously, there are some issues when you say I know a guy or I have a guy at this property. There's a couple of different types of vendors, and when you know that guy, we want to make sure that that they're listed in the vendor directory to make sure that they have the proper insurance, the proper licenses. And Susan's going to talk about the different types of insurance, what kind of insurance policies, what our limits are. Uh, we need to make sure that we have all our COIs, W9s. In order to go through the vendor program, if you have a vendor that you think very highly of and would be beneficial, your best bet is to steer them to the LiebermanManagement.com uh, webpage, and there's a whole tab for I'm a vendor. They can go in there, register, 
one time per year and get everything updated and explain to them that they do get in the directory and that's distributed to all of our managers and board members and sell the tool because we obviously if it's somebody good we want to use them at multiple properties not just that one so you always have the paid vendor that is in the program then you have the exempt vendor what is an exempt vendor you don't have to necessarily reach out and get all of that information but those are people like auditors attorneys we still need to get all their license and insurance information but they're exempt, they're not paying a fee, and they're in the program. The next one is board wave. And this seems to be some confusion for a lot of managers. A board wave. So you have someone on your board that says, I want to hire this vendor, someone you've never heard of, and they are not in the program, uh, they're not interested for being in the program, although I would sell it to them and say, hey, if you would like to have work at more than one, one property, I encourage you to go online and register, and that way you can work at more than one property. The problem that we've been having is you have someone at one property that is board waived, and then you say, oh, I have another property, why don't you come and go work at this property? What ends up happening, though, is their, insurance of, or their certificate of insurance only lists them as being insured for that one property. So God forbid anything happen at your other property, they're not going to be covered. So if you think you want to use them in multiple properties, please encourage them to go on and register. Because just because they're away, that doesn't mean that we're not going to collect insurance and additional documentation. We still have to get the W-9, we still have to send the 1099 at the end of the year. So there's a lot of other documentation that still is necessary. But if they're away, they have to have the form, board waiver form filled out that is in box under the vendor program, as well as they have to um, send in their certificate of insurance for that property. So please do not use them at more than one property if they're only board away at your property. And we can talk about that later as well. I have a question. Yes. But some vendors are being used at multiple properties, right? Uh, they are being used, but we do not want them used. I know. Because I know they're against the law. Well, they don't have insurance. So usually you still say, I need a certificate well, of insurance, unless your board has waived any with insurance requirements, <coughs> which we don't agree with in any way, shape, or form, because right. it's a huge liability for the association. If they're at more than one property, I would call them and explain to them, and Susan will show you why when we go over the certificate of insurance. Right. But we don't want them, because usually what happens is they'll say, okay, I'm working at Cranberry Lakes, and here's my certificate of insurance for Cranberry Lakes. But then if they go and go to Polo Club, they're not insured there. Well, no, I'd have to get a different certificate. Right. Correct. But I was under the board way at every property. Okay. But my question is that when this program first came out, I thought the vendors were told you can't work at multiple properties. Correct. You You're not. not in. But what ends up happening is, uh, we see time and time again, is you have someone do better cleaning by Joe's handyman service, so he's board away because he's the brother's cousin's uncle of the board member. And then you want him to be used at another one because you find out he does do a great job. But board way just means he's board way for that property. You shouldn't be because what ends up happening is you go ahead and already have that, that company do the work and then we get the invoice. Well, obviously the work's already done and now you want the vendor to get paid, but they're not even set up in our system. So you're actually delaying the whole process because you're not verifying if we even have all the documentation and we can't process the invoice if we don't have them set up in the system and we can't set them up without a W-9, the correct business name, the tax ID number, the social security number. So unfortunately, to expedite processing of the invoices, we want you to do this work prior to contracting with the vendor. So if they're board waived, one property only. I mean, it's a minimal, nominal fee just to have them go online and set it up. If they don't, if they don't have the capability to go online, Catherine and the vendor program can help you get anyone set up. I know, but I guess what I'm saying is those vendors are getting out of paying that money and they still get the same. Right, but we're, we try to stop that. I don't know if you've gotten email. Multiple managers have gotten emails stating that we're trying to correct this okay. so that this doesn't happen because it is a liability. Which is why we're doing this. Okay, so board wave. Yes. Yes. Okay, so what she's saying is if you have subcontractors for your contractors, they also need insurance. Thank you. 
Okay, so does everyone understand what a board wave vendor is? Okay, last but not least, these are past vendors. So if you're ordering supplies, if it's somebody that doesn't even step on the property, like HD Supply, Peachtree, anyone that you're just ordering office supplies for, they are waived. We don't need our past. We don't need anything from them other than just getting them set up. We don't need the certificate of insurance or anything. Any questions on that? All right, so how do I know if the vendor is already set up? Like we showed you earlier, you can go in STAR, you can look it up by specialty, you can look it up by name, you can check to see if, um, call the vendor program, send them an email at vp at lmsnet.com, they will answer you, um, which is Kathy, and then make sure that they go and set everything up online or through them. We want to talk about the insurance next. I'm going to hand it over to Susan because she, She's going to show you, and I'm going to do a quick handout so everyone can look at a sample certificate of insurance and what it needs to say. Yes. Just want you to touch on uh, the vendors assigned by property or by specialty. You know, when they're expired, that whole, that whole category disappears out of the property profile. That's a vendor by specialty. Yes. So it disappears not only for property by specialty, but that vendor disappears from anything. So in your property profile where you have vendors assigned under for, you know, window washing, I've got this person. Well, if their insurance has expired, your window washing document is even going to disappear. Right. So when, you, when you're in your vendor profile or the property profile for that property and you're trying to remember who was that person because it's not something that you do all the time, who's the person that did the tuck pointing last year and you look under tuck pointing and you see your category's gone, you didn't even have a tuck pointing. It's because the vendor that was in there is no longer valid. Any other questions before we move on to the insurance requirements for the vendors? Okay. Judy. Um, some vendors are set up at the time of acquisition or when they right. when we Right. When we take over new property, they're automatically added. So they are added for a year. Um, we do ask for insurance and licenses and everything else, but to just expedite, to expedite things right off the bat, we do add them to go ahead and pay them. We still then go back and back bill just to make sure that we've got certificates of insurance and everything else. So that's, that's a natural process, but ideally you want to make sure that you're using vendors that you trust, that are insured, and the way to do that, if you've got a vendor, your brand new property, Make sure you talk to them. Say, hey, you know, go online, see if you can sign up for this, and then not only can you work at my property, you'll work at other properties, but you also want to make sure that they've been funded by our VP program. That's why we're here, just to make sure that you're hiring vendors that have insurance and cause your problems. <coughs> Any other questions about the vendor program? Yes. Just one clarification um, on that issue numbers. If the board enters a contract with a vendor that's in the part of the program, yes. Um, I have been requesting their W9 and COI anyway. Is that duplicated? And do I not need to do that if they're already verified in the program? If all the if the vendor's already active and in the program, you don't need to get a copy. Okay, and I'm going to hand out just so everyone has a copy of one of the blanket COIs and what the requirements are for our insurance requirements. All right, so we've had some basic um, we've had some basic requirements. So this is our benchmark. We ask for a million dollars per occurrence for general liability. We ask for $2 million aggregate, which means you can have two $1 million losses there. The coverage should not include residential construction because that's what we do. Also, completed operations, we'd like to have it for two years. That means if they come in and do the work, you don't want it falling off your building, and then there's no warranty for it. Workers' compensation. I ask for $500,000 for each of these limits. This is higher than the state mandatory, so sometimes we might get some pushback for this. 
The way I look at this is any injury, it doesn't take a whole lot to rack up $500,000 in the hospital these days, so that $100,000 per accident may not be enough. So that's what we're asking for as a benchmark. We've always asked for that ever since the program's been put together. Professional liability, this is for anybody that's giving you an opinion that you're gonna take action on, like your attorney, your auditor, engineers, architects, those kinds of things. So if they really screw that up, this is the coverage that will help you get back on your feet. Okay, we have changed the wording requirements. What it used to say down there is that Lieberman Management all managed properties, co-ops, condos, etc. as required under contract. We have removed as required under contract because, as you all know, many of you don't have a contract when you hire somebody. So that emergency call, your elevator guy, you've got a contract, but when he comes out for an emergency call, he's now working without a contract. So technically, that was a big loophole that we have closed. So the general liability policy on a primary and non-contributory basis means that things that go wrong based on what they did, their policy is going to cover it, and they shouldn't be able to come back and ask for the association policies to cover it. This is something to really keep an eye out for, especially if you're gathering your own certificates. This is a change. And Michelle is going to be passing out a sample so that you've got there, you've got an example. Now, if you get something in, and we've been getting a lot of them where they're putting all sorts of fancy wording in, and sometimes I even need to go to the broker and ask about that, don't be afraid to call either Carol, Carol Stahulski, send it to insurance at lmsnet.com. That's where we actually go through the vendor's certificates. Give me a call. If there's still questions, we'll go ahead and forward that to the broker to say, okay, what does this actually mean? All right, Lieberman should be a certificate holder. Don't allow the vendor to do the work prior to knowing they are vetted and insured. And we see this basically on a daily basis where you know, you're looking for a check, your vendor's calling you, hey, I need to get paid, this work was done two weeks ago. We don't have them set up, we've never verified they've got insurance, and now we're in a position to say, okay, we're going to release this check now, and maybe you're not ever going to go back full circle and make sure that they have the insurance that they need. This is, should be a big red flag for you. If you've ever had to ask us to go ahead and release a check on work that's already been done, you may not have been insured for that, and that's a problem. All right, group insurance program, I know that Alliant Mesereau was here talking about our 401k, and for those of you that uh, have been here a while, you all know me, and I do an insurance program with Mesereau. I also work with another broker for suburban coverage, the tiny little print there says the coverage limits that we have. If you are new to Lieberman, feel free to call me with any insurance questions. I am a licensed broker and I can discuss insurance with you. I can discuss it with your homeowners if there are questions with regard to what kind of coverage should I need. Am I uncovered for this? Happy to talk to you. All right, insurance claim rebuild. This is something that is new. If you are within Lieberman's programs, you get 10 free hours of my time. If you're not within our program, you get five hours of my time. For things like claims, if, if you've got a really large claim, for example, you all remember the uh, color vortex. You have these massive claims where you're dealing with, okay, I've got people on site that we had to pay, and I've got eight different vendors out, and I'm working on 16 different units. If I'm involved in helping you track that, I actually track the hours to do that. Also, lawsuits, if we're doing um, discovery, if I'm having to get together a lot of documents, sometimes I can knock that stuff out, but sometimes that takes days and days and days and days. 
So what, we, what you need to do, and the regionals out there need to support in that, is that we have to give these boards the heads up when something like this rears its head. So you get a large lawsuit where, you, where I'm going out and getting all this discovery documentation for the association. And if it takes me more than five hours, you will be charged back for that. And I thought there was another slide, but I guess not. So there is a letter that goes out. It's got my name on the bottom of it, and basically it tells the, the board that they will be charged at a rate of $125 an hour, which is standard regional rate for anything that exceeds five hours. So five hours per property per year? Five hours per property per year. The five hour mark is for people that we don't write. 10 hours for people that we do, and honestly, these are, it's a small number. Right. So I will let you know as soon as possible. Most importantly though, when you get a large claim and you're struggling with it, let me know so that I can help you. We've got ways of putting these claims together, we'll spreadsheet them out. Most of my time that I spend a ton of time on are, is lawsuit related, and that, frees you up to do your job and you know I will help you walk through that lawsuit. Is it per year or per year? Anybody else? I did a, a previous slide I was waiting for the presentation was to be completed. The certificate of insurance requirements, so the change that was in the red under box one, that's the only change, correct? Right. That became effective yeah, under, under general liability policy on a primary and non-contributory basis. So you guys will have a copy of this, but this is also on the Lieberman Management website. If you go under vendors and then insurance, <coughs> the insurance requirement is out there as a PEF. That's that same document that you have. And then you also said we. Um, we set the coverage to a we, meaning Lieberman? Yes. Okay, so if the board of directors are okay with what the state sets, and they can sign a waiver. Yes. Then will they become a property only vendor? Yes. So that's that's really important to know if if they know this guy. And I I see red flags every time. I, well, I know a guy. Is he insured? Does he have the right kind of coverage? You know. What your boards may not recognize is that they are the board of directors for a million dollar corporation and they need to act accordingly. If they choose to hire their brother-in-law, well that's great, but we need to protect Lieberman that they're signing off on this, saying that they've been told that this is below our benchmark or they're acting, they're taking on the liability of working without insurance. <coughs> Hello, Freya. Um, did we receive a copy of your hours that you bill up for them? How do we get the documentation of the hours that you do this? I would have to get Demetrius to do it, but it is a program where I hit start and stop, and there's a timer that runs. So, yes, you could get that. And you would that would be a part of the chargeback. Got it? So, when Susan charges for hours, there's going to be descriptions of what it was for, the amount of time, and that's going to be on the corporate bill that's out on the network on a monthly basis. Thank you. Nothing else? All right, well, happy Wednesday. <laughs>